Hello, how's it going? Ken here. Uh, so, uh, I've been doing a number of videos lately trying to solve the world's problems. I can do it. You just gotta listen to what I gotta say for 10 minutes. 10 minutes a day, listen to me. Make the world a better place. Now, uh, I'm getting ready to go down to Venice Beach, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm gonna go make some art all day um, and maybe go out working tonight because Tuesday seemed to do well for me. Um, but right now, we gotta solve hunger in the United States. I'm gonna do it, 10 minutes, ready? Here it goes. Put the, put the time up on the clock. So, um, you may have already seen my, my uh, video I made a couple years ago called the food stamp solution, in which I basically broke down the efficiency um, of food production in the United States and how much of our GDP is involved in food production. It's only like 2%, something like that. And uh, I was like, you know, we could just give everybody, you know, food stamps and, and it would be a, a point of purchase subsidy. So instead of having these farming subsidies, you know, we, we give the, the people a way to signal the market with their food stamps to say, you know, make this, make that. And, you know, so it was a nice little blend of socialism and the free market. See, now everybody's like... Free market social versus socialism. You need a blend of the two. You got to come up with these solutions. But anyway, people. So a lot of people, the capitalists in particular, didn't like uh, my solution, the food stamp solution, because they're like the taxes. It's like three trillion dollars in taxes, which is pretty much what the like the United States collects um, in taxes every every uh yeah it's a lot anyway so um yeah it'd be like three trillion dollars in taxes uh and so everybody nobody liked that that was a bad bad thing bad thing bad bad thing so anyway so here's the non-tax solution i came up just now popped into my head a way to accomplish the same thing tax-free in fact it's really tax-free wait till you listen to this so um now this would be a little sticky wiggate the IRS, you're going to have to work this out um, with some finer details, might even take a little bit of lobbying, but we, we'll get the, uh, we'll get the capitalists to pay for it since they don't want to, they, they don't want to have taxes, so they're going to the ones to help, help us lobby, but uh, we need to create a couple of uh, non-profits, bare minimum one, bare minimum one non-profit. Uh, but it would probably be a good idea to set it up as like a, a regional sort of thing um, kind of like the way um, You know like there's the uh, Goodwill I'm not saying that's a good example of a good nonprofit. I'm not a big fan um, Of the way good, Goodwill operates their business, but they if you look at their their structure their corporate structure um, they're breaking broken up into the US geographical zones as they're called um, which is kind of like a collection of states um, regions unnamed unspoken regions but they exist and um, anyway so uh, you need a couple of these nonprofits and the way the nonprofits work here we go four minutes and I did a one minute introduction, so we're really only on three minutes on the idea now. I don't even think I'm going to get a whole ten minutes to get it done because it's going to hit. It's going to happen right now. Listening. So, what you do is you have uh, these nonprofits, and the way they work is you have a restaurant um, or farmers, you know, market or whatever something with food grocery store it doesn't matter as long as you have food that you sell as a business right so the people who sell food as a business in whatever capacity as a farm as a retailer however you want to do it wholesaler transportation whatever um so you take uh, a certain amount of food or food and services 
this is one that little sticky wicket with the IRS see because then you have to think about value added and all this stuff and what's a service and what's a because you know the IRS are gonna be dicks they always are but anyway but hopefully they won't be since we're trying to feed America um, but anyway so people basically um, the the nonprofit takes over the whole process of uh, feeding poor people from the government they just like take it over and start doing it for them say so, you know people don't like the way the government does things fine you know don't think it's efficient too much bureaucracy whatever whatever your reasons are all right so you know you got healthy competition this nonprofit um, and so this nonprofit the way it works out is um, you know for somebody to receive from the nonprofit, uh, they have to give the nonprofit some information. For starters, their tax returns. They have to take their tax returns from the previous year and send it to the nonprofit so that the nonprofit can go and look and see what their income is um, to see that they actually need some help. And then the second thing is they need their address. This is very important. They need to know where these folks are at or if they're transient or whatever they don't necessarily have to have an address but like be like okay I'm a traveler and I could be anywhere from between Seattle and Los Angeles or whatever um, and that gives them an idea of about uh, the kind of assistance they can give them so you know because it's going to be store specific that's kind of the, the element um, so if it's say 7-eleven 7-Elevens are everywhere, that's an easy one. Right now, these 7-Elevens are making money, tons of money off of EBT right now. That's what I've, I've been noticing, talking to the people who work there and stuff. Um, because uh, there's nowhere else to get food when you're in the in the city. They call it a, a, food, uh, what is it? a food desert. Um, anyway, so in the food desert, you got to go and... Uh, 7-Eleven to get all your fresh produce and pretty much everything unless you know where the stores are at um, But it doesn't have to be a 7-Eleven could be anything could be a Safeway or Kroger or whatever could be a Jolly Rogers McDonald's um, But anyway, so these the um, The product food um whether that's prepared, all the preparedness, this is a big thing. You can't use food stamps to get prepared food, like, or, or not prepared food, heated food, you know. Um, a cold sandwich is okay, but not a hot one. So, um, but since you're a nonprofit, it doesn't matter. Could be, you know, lasagna, um, you know, hot from the, from the chef, you know, uh, it doesn't matter whatever it is, but you have to figure out what all the value added to it and stuff, because if you're only spending, you know, $1.25 on your pasta, then the uh, IRS is only going to want to reimburse you for $1.25, because they don't want to count the services and stuff, but... If the services change a product, and this is the key, this is what you have to do with the lobbying. If the services uh, change the product, then the product has added value, and therefore could be worth more. So that you know that twenty dollar twenty five worth of ingredients makes uh, twelve dollar spaghetti dinner or whatever, and then um, the uh, the the restaurant or store donates the product to the non-profit uh, profit. so um, so in a form of a coupon or whatever and then the the nonprofit collects all these coupons from all these different places look at the people start you know go lowest income up and you know what, if it's a popular thing and they just got way too much food, you know, they can raise the bar um, through time 
on the income levels, you know, people, maybe, maybe you make the same amount of money as last year, but last year they didn't have enough, and this year they have more food, so now the bar has been raised and my income is underneath the level now, because the level went up uh, instead of my income going down. You know, a lot of people are finding themselves, their incomes having to dive in order to get the service services that they need, which puts limits on how much they can work and all this other stuff. You know, like the, the jump from doing, there's a sleeping birdie. That was so cute. Um, the jump from, you know, uh, you know, getting, you know, working, being working poor, that's what I am, working poor where you work and you, um, you earn money and, but you still, it's not enough. So you get, uh, food stamps, EBT, um, or, um, you know, my health care, all that's provided, you know, health care is a big doozy. So, you know, I mean, if for me, when I'm looking for jobs, I have to look for jobs that if they're going to pay me more, they have to pay me enough to cover health care too, which is like a huge jump from where I'm at now. Oh, look it, I'm, I'm at 10 minutes. All right, here's the final piece of the puzzle. Here it goes. All right, so the nonprofit has the coupons, okay? It's 501c3. The restaurant or store gets a donation tax credit against their income, all right? So they got that, so they don't have to pay, That's they can deduct that donated food from their taxes. Why? Because they're providing infrastructure. Okay, that's the key to all nonprofits. You have to provide infrastructure. You have to do the job of the U.S. government for them and do a better job at it, hopefully. You don't actually have to do a better job. You can actually do a worse job, but why not do a better job? Anyway, so they get the tax credit, the store does, and then the 501c3, uh, you know, call it, I don't know, Food Works or whatever the hell. I'm sure that's taken, but the nonprofit then, name it whatever you want. The nonprofit then takes the coupons, distributes it to, or, or you know, you could set it up electronically so that they just have a credit on their, on their account. Um, and then they go to the restaurant or the 7-Eleven or the McDonald's or the, you know, the Ruth Chris's Steakhouse, doesn't matter. Um, and they go and they have a nice meal, you know? And yeah, they're responsible for tipping and all that and, you know, they should consider that, but, you know, if they don't, can't afford a tip, well, you know, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Um, that's something that will have to be worked out later. Let's just feed hungry people for right now. Anyway, that's it. That's my 10 minutes. Thank you very much for watching. You guys have a good one.